Hello, good evening. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Wendy, can you hear me? Wendy, are you there? No. Hello. Okay. Hello, Selena. Hi, teacher. How are you? Hey, bye. Okay. Nice. Nice. Ready for right another now. Ready for right another now, class. Come right now, come back to my house. My house. Really? Ready? Yes. yes, I'm ready for the class. Okay, good. So, you finished late today. Right? Sorry? You finished late today. You yes. Finished, you finished finish. work late today. Yes, I finished. Okay, that sounds good. Now ready to, to to study and to rest. Yes, okay. rest and after study. Okay, yeah, definitely. And tomorrow you have to go back. Yes, go back my work. Okay, what time do you start? Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Okay. But mm -hmm. you you go from here from uh from uh a the word is right. From yes. Campo so yeah, Verde. That at that but at seven thirty the traffic is hard. <laughs> no. No, but, it's uh uh I going to uh maybe forty forty thirty. Four. Four thirty. But, uh, sorry. Ah, yes. Ah, four thirty. Ah, okay. In, in, in the morning. Yes. Wow, that's very early. That's very yes, early. A, little, a little traffic uh this time. Yes, I live at uh four fifty more or less, four fifty, five o'clock. And then uh mm -hmm. and, and I begin to work at seven. Okay. So at that time, yeah. That time. And these days is uh-huh, yeah. Well no, actually to Santa Tecla. Uh, but, but I have to I have to go to San Salvador because uh my wife works in San Salvador. Okay. So to San Salvador and then I come back to Santa Tecla. So yes. it's more or less one hour and twenty minutes the the trip. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if I don't live at five, oof, I, I don't make it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, then yeah. it's more, more complicated. Okay, okay. good. So we have now Carla, Melissa, Marlene, and also Oscar is here. Okay, we're going to the topic we had yesterday was Was about defining and non-defining relative clauses. Okay, everyone is ready. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to play back the video that we watched yesterday so that you can refresh the idea of the 
uh, relative uh, defining non defining relative clauses. Okay, so that we can discuss or see, for example, if you have some other examples that you can share with the class. Now, just let me. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. Clauses. Defining and non defining relative clauses. Defining relative clauses are used to identify people. A dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents. A dialect coach is a language specialist that works with actors on their accents. Non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. A location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. As we mentioned on the intro video, we have two types of relative clauses. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. Let's look at the difference between them. Number one, defining relative clauses. The information in the clause is necessary. It shows us which person is being described or talked about. For example, the actor who starred in that movie is very talented. Number two, non-defining relative clauses. The information isn't necessary. It is extra information that is added to the sentence. For example, Tom Cruise, who starred in that movie, is very talented. I want to point out that commas are used before and after a non-defining relative clause. Think about the people involved in making a movie. Choose to and describe what they do using defining or non-defining relative clauses. All right. So this is the topic, you know, that we were talking about yesterday. And today I want to show you the, well, you already know the, the difference between the defining and non-defining. Now I'll show you the, another definition, right? When we have, for example, the relative clauses and what they are about. Now we'll ask uh, probably okay here defining relative clauses. Okay, Jorge, would you please read this part here in yellow? Okay, teacher, we use a definite relative clause to give a essential information about the someone of the something, information that we need in order to understand what or who is begin referring to a definite in relative clause usually comes immediately after the known in describe. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the defining relative clauses. It's essential information, right? Uh, with that information, it's easier for us to know what the person is referring to, right? If it is an, a thing, an animal, or a person. And also the defining relative clause usually comes immediately after the noun, okay? You will see here, for example, the noun, the people. Here. Thanks to this one. I've got this one. The people, right? Some cells. Uh, to somebody and a woman. Okay, that it says it says here 
A defining relative clause usually comes immediately after the noun it describes. They're the people, and then the defining clause, who want to buy our house after the noun it describes. So in this case, the people, some cells, somebody, and a woman are the nouns, okay? And after the noun, you will see the defining relative clause. Then, uh, Carla Rene, would you please read the, <clears throat> the paragraph in green? Okay. We usually use a relative pronoun, a D, who, what, I'm sorry, that, which, whose, and whom, to introduce a defining relative clause. In the examples, the relative clause is seen in bold. And the person or thing being referred to is underlined. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, as you can see here, who, uh, okay, who, that, which, whose, and whom, these are relative pronouns, okay? because these are the words that introduce, okay, the relative uh, close, the relative sentence, relative close. And when we talk about who, is for people, which, okay, which is for objects or places, okay, and that, you can use that also for people or for places, okay. Who's, indicates a possession, okay? For example, the, the woman whose children, okay, whose children go to the university is a very hard working person, okay? The woman is a very hard working person. The information that we are giving is the woman whose children go to the university is a very hard working person. Okay, so the woman works very hard to send her children to the school or to the university. Okay, <clears throat> then here you have some examples. And uh, Rosalino, would you please read these four examples? Jose, are you there? Me, teacher. Okay, Julio, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, they are the people who, who want to buy our house. Here are some cells which have been affected. They should give the money to somebody who they think need the treatment most, talking about an actress. She's now playing a woman whose son was killed in the First World War. Okay, thank you very much. Now here, for example, he said, talking about a woman, she is now playing a woman, talking about an actress, whose son was killed in the First World War. This is an actress, okay? It could be any famous or popular actress that you know. And the role in the movie is of a woman who, whose son was killed in the First World War. So it is uh, like, uh, we use this information a lot when we talk about movies, right? So when we want to explain or tell a person what the movie is about, right? What is the plot, the drama in the movie? So we use these expressions. Uh, there are the people who want to buy our house. Then we are referring to that specific group of people and what do and what they want. Okay, they want to buy our house. And here are some cells which have been uh, affected. Okay, probably could be human cells, right? That have been affected by by some disease or or a cat or something. They should give the money to a person, to any person, to somebody who they think needs 
the treatment modes. Okay, this is, you know, for example, it's a general question that when you are going to donate money for a donation, then they said, okay, the recommendation is to give it to somebody who needs who needs it more, okay? The one who has more need. Okay, then in the, sorry, in the video also explains the non-defining, right? Now I'm going to ask, uh, let me see, Francisco, read the first one. Okay, teacher. <clears throat> non-defining relative clauses. We use non-defining relative clauses to give extra information about the person or thing. It is not necessary information. We don't need it to understand who or what is being referred to. It's being referred to, right? So then we have Claire. He's doing the London Marathon this year. Okay, sometimes Claire, okay, Claire is a person. And then probably who I work with may be necessary, may not be, but you want to include it, it's okay. Uh, if I don't know, for example, uh, if they tell you uh, Peter is doing the London Marathon this year, and then who I work with. If you say Peter, who I work with, is doing the London Marathon this year. If you don't know Peter, it doesn't matter if I tell you who I work with or not. You will always ask, yeah, but who is Peter? I work with him. Yeah, but what does he do? Okay, so that's the... Uh, just give me a second, please, because... Uh, Telling me that I'm having a problem with the battery, but it's not. Uh, okay. Wait, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to. Okay, in case there is uh, an issue with the uh, With the video, I will let you know because sending me a, a weird message, the computer that I need to load the battery, but it's loaded. I don't know what's going on. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, let's see if it works. Good. Okay, so then, as I was telling you, right, so then uh, probably Claire, who, were, who I work with, is doing the London Marathon. Uh, I'm just telling you who work here. She, I mean, this person, she works with me, but probably if you don't know her, it's going to be the same uh, for you, right? Okay, Claire is Claire. Now, the 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 structure that is not correct if you say claire i work with now you have to use who is doing the london marathon this year the correct one is the first okay now uh, let's see who's the next one i'm going to ask a uh, catherine Lisbeth. Could you please read this paragraph? Yes, teacher. Okay. And green or yellow? The green one, huh? We always. We always use a relative pronoun, who, which, was, or whom, to introduce a non-definite relative clause 
In the examples, the relative clause in, is in bold and the person or thing being, being referred to use underline, to, underline uh, it. Yes. Okay, if you see, it's the same idea, right? Doctors use the testing kit for regular screening for lung and stomach cancers, which now here comes cancers, lung and stomach cancers is the noun. Okay, job doctors is the testing kit for regular screening for lung and stomach cancers, which account for 70% of cancers treated in the Western world, right? So this is uh, probably the information that goes for a medicine, right? So doctors use the testing kit regular screening for lung and stomach cancer. Now, if you want this, if you want to give statistics, which account for 70% of cancers treated in the Western world, for some people, this information might be necessary or important. For other people, maybe it will not. Just, it's just the statistic. Alice, who has worked in Brussels and London ever since leaving Edinburgh, will be starting a teaching course in the autumn. Okay, here, if you say Alice will be starting a teaching course in the autumn, okay, it will be okay. So, who has worked, remember the comma, who has worked in Brussels and London ever since leaving Edinburgh, you just probably giving some, uh, you want to enhance the information with that person. Okay, now uh, please take a look at the sentences, the examples in the defining and not defining, right? So we have here Claire is the noun. And you can see the sentence after and here. Now, please write one sentence with defining and one sentence using non defining relative clauses about general topics, something personal that you. Uh, that you might consider you need to that is essential information and one that is just uh, for example if I said uh, let me see you can use for famous people people or um, let's say uh, popular actors actresses uh, soccer players, okay? For example, you can say that uh, that is the player. You can use this one here instead of those. Okay, that is the player who won the, let's say the, what could be a, a prize? the the golden glove okay that is the goalkeeper that is the goalkeeper who won the golden glove okay that is the actress if you know the name you can use the name that is the actress who won the oscar award for best actress okay so then you are using Try to follow the same uh, structure of this sentence. Just change the words, okay? So that is something like uh, paraphrasing. One sentence of each, and you can write here in the chat. Whom is just for formal, Oscar? It's similar to who, but informal, uh, uh, informal context, right? In a letter, mostly in written forms. Okay. Uh, for example, when you use um, to whom it may concern in a letter, uh, that's the 
the group of people, uh, let's say that's the group of people whom I chose for this event, okay? So then uh, those are the best uh, participants whom the board of directors have chosen to represent the institution, okay? So then in formal context, and it's similar meaning to who. Who is less formal and whom is obviously more formal. I will share with you this information. There are who want to play stuff for them. And we see Marta, who I study with at university, wants us to form a company. Okay, this Francisco, this is good. Yes, right. Marta, who I study with at university, wants us to form a company. You can say Marta wants us to form a company, and no problem. Good. I have a friend who likes chocolate. <laughs> well, I have a friend who loves chocolate too. That's good. Nice, Sarah. I have an I have an aunt who cooks very well. Okay, who cooks very very well. This is an action. He's my best friend who drive. That's my best friend who drives the person who drives me home. The person should ask forgiveness. Uh, here, for example, you can use to whom. The person should ask forgiveness to, uh, to whom they offend. They offend. To whom they offend. This is like to whom it may concern. Okay, I asked her who had told her the secret. Ah, okay, this is a good one, George. Who told you that secret? Then I asked her, this is like a, a, like a report to the speech. Okay, I asked her who had told her the secret. Uh-huh, Thomas is sick. Toma, Thomas, who plays? Okay, don't forget the, look at this one, uh, their chocolate want, here are some cells which have, if it is present, present, and they should give the money to somebody. And here said, she's now playing a woman whose son was. Okay, was killed because it is 
<clears throat> sorry, third person. Woman was killed. And here, somebody, they should give the money to somebody. Okay, who they think needs. So somebody needs. Third person, like singular, singular. Singular was killed. Sells, have. Okay, have been. Plural, plural. They call this in English, verb agreement. The verb agreement is when the, the verb and the subject make sense. Okay, they, they, uh, they have a relation, right? For example, if I say, if I say I, then the verb is going to be work. If I say he, the verb is going to be words. That is the verb agreement. Okay. Another sentence. Sandra, who, teach, who teaches, for example, uh -huh, Sandra, oh, wait a minute here. A judge is the highest authority in a law sport. Okay, a judge. He decides the destiny of the accused based in evidence. Wow. Okay, here you can use a judge who is the highest authority in a law sport decides the destiny of the accused based in evidence, okay? Non-defining, a judge is the person who is the highest authority in a law score, whom decides the destiny of the accused based in evidence, okay? So that would be the other way around. Sandra, who teaches English play, okay? Play football. Good. Messi, who had who has uh, problems, who had okay, who had growth pro. Okay, what is that? I'm not here. Okay, I got it. Now. Messi had growth uh, growth problems. Became the goat. All right. And this one, talking about electronic repairing is the tech to fix up my fashion, audio, etc. Okay, talking about electronic repairing is the tech, yes, to fix up my fashion, audio, etc. Okay, Oscar, good. Nice. Okay, just here, um, then what you just need to have in mind is that when the information is essential, okay, and when the information is, they, I don't know why actually uh, they call it that it's not really necessary information, but probably because people sometimes we, I mean, it's clear from the context, right? It's clear from the context. Sometimes when we are listening to people, uh, to people speaking in in the news, for example, the the news anchors, right, or the programs about sports, sometimes we detect that sometimes the narrators or people are giving some information that we think is not necessary, right? Uh, sometimes when we see the narration of the, of the soccer game, okay, we, see, we think that some information is irrelevant because we are watching what it is happening, right? Probably on the radio is different. 
okay, because we are using the imagination of what it is going on. It's just a matter of uh, uh, how we understand things. Okay, now we're going to do the exercises here in the on the platform related to this. It says read the following sentences. Add the non-defined relative clauses in parentheses to the sentences. Remember to use commas for the non-defined relative clauses and a period at the end. Okay, a foreign correspondent travels all over the world or writes about events in or in other countries. A foreign correspondent, comma, who writes about events in order in other countries, comma, travels travels all over the world. All right. What is this one? The number one. It's the same sentence, right? Who has a number no, number two? Me, teacher. Yes. A well page designer who is a graphic artist needs sophisticated computer knowledge. Okay. A web page designer who is a graphic artist needs sophisticated computer knowledge. Okay, so we had to use the commas and the period, right? And an edit editorial. Who has number three? Me. Okay, go ahead, Francisco. An editorial page uh, editor who is a daily newspaper columnist, gives opinions about current issues. Okay, about current issues. Okay. And number four, Julio. Julio Cesar, you wanna try? A gossip, uh, a gossip columnist uh, writes about celebrities and uh, a gossip columnist who uh, a gossip columnist uh, who gets to go to uh, fabulous Fabulous. Fabulous uh, Paris uh, writes about celebrities and scandals. Okay, good. Now we can check here. Yes, a foreign correspondent who writes events in other, in other countries, okay, travels around the world. Okay, here we have and this is where you can check here, right? A foreign correspondent. You see that, uh, for example, when you remember that the relative uh, defining or not defining clause goes after the noun, right? In this case, a foreign correspondent is a noun. Then you introduce the uh, relative clause and then the commas, and then you completed with a company. A web page, a web page designer, that's the noun, who is a graphic artist, is the close, needs sophisticated computer knowledge. And there you have. Okay, and an editorial page editor here. You stop between the noun, subject, and the verb, who is a daily newspaper columnist, gives opinions about current issues. And then here, 
you have the complete sentence. A uh, gossip columnist who gets to go to fabulous parties write about celebrities a scandal and a scandal. Then in that case, if there is a comma or period or a space, there is no problem. Okay, the only thing is that you cannot see. Okay, take a look at the sentences. And remember that in this one, when you are talking about the, the non-defining relative clauses, if you omit, okay, if you extract Okay, the relative, the non-defined relative close, the sentence still makes sense. A foreign correspondent travels all over the world. A web page designer needs sophisticated computer knowledge. Okay, so if you see who is a graphic artist, that is the extra information that we give, right? But may not be necessary. A, an editorial page editor gives opinions about foreign issues. Okay, an editorial page editor who is a daily newspaper columnist is not necessary because probably not in all the newspapers is going to be a daily columnist. Probably in other newspapers, it could have other responsibilities. A, a gossip columnist writes about celebrities and a scandal. Okay, a gossip colonist who gets to go to fabulous parties. Uh, is extra information not necessary because also a gossip columnist maybe is not only for a person who goes to parties, but is probably involved in uh, sports events. And these people probably are more interesting interested in gossiping about things that happen in the sports okay so that's why you know it's it's not really relevant that information i think we read this one before right Aren't we? Yes, yes. Just to chill with this. But in uh, section two or one. Maybe three. Uh -huh, in section three, it's repeated, right? Uh -huh. Yes. But in this one, if you see that it's no, well, this is not a great exercise. We want you to practice your reading, okay, and learn new vocabulary. You may take your own notes. Yes, that's why it's the same repeated action. But we were discussing this one about plagiarism, right? And what it is right or what it is not. And your opinions. Okay, this is probably the... What are the two topics? Just, just a question. Can, can we say that uh, a person who likes to tell uh, gossip is a sniffer? Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's like a snoopy person. Yeah, you know, it's, they like to put their nose into things that they shouldn't. Okay, and like you know, there are different uh, <laughs> different levels, right? Uh, because yeah, there is also the the paparazzi too, okay, that they take pictures and they are like to sneak into uh, people's li uh, personal life, okay. So then, yeah, somehow this is, but probably the remember that in this context they usually they usually use um, vocabulary that is more academic, right? So they don't use the 
reflexive expressions that would be more uh, how can I tell you uh, more uh, in idioma idiomatic expressions okay or more colloquials right so this is a little bit more academic okay so but gossiping remember is well do you like gossiping people no no okay anybody likes gossiping i mean but there are levels of gossiping i guess right okay because if you are probably you know talking about the uh, the life of a famous actor or actress okay like for example i don't know like when a famous actor or actress separate they split they get divorced Okay, so then there is uh, many people talking about uh, these issues. There are some people that get involved, you know, like we you know, I remember uh, the, uh, Shakira and uh, Piquet, right? So when they split, so everybody wanted to give an opinion. Some, some uh, there were some Shakira supporters, some uh, Piquet supporters, and then people got involved, right? So that's, that's gossiping, right? So then... Uh, we don't know their life, so we don't know what happened, okay? But uh, just to say, okay, what happened? Ah, this and this and this, ah, okay. I mean, probably we are curious sometimes, okay? Sometimes there is curiosity. We want to know what's going on, but that's okay. But there are some people that get really involved right into the topic. Okay. So we have here the two topics of this unit were the passive voice, okay, to describe events, remember? Okay, how to describe a process, a protocol, how to write a report in formal context. And then a, and this last topic was about the defining and non-defining relative clauses. Remember that when you use these structures, uh, what you are showing is that your level of English obviously is not so basic, right? Because it's not the same like when you uh, when we were watching in the video, okay, the two sentences separated, right? Like in this one. And oh, it's only only one. It's an only one time playing video. I know we have studied relative clauses before, but a bit more. Stay and find out the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses. Define. Okay, this one, right? When you say, for example, um, a dialect coach is a language specialist. A specialist. She works uh, with actors on their accents. Uh, uh, they, uh, she instructs the actors how to do it. Uh, she also knows or has studied for that uh, process. She and she and she and she, so we repeat she a lot, okay? I mean, it's, it's all right, but you know, it would sound probably a little bit uh, repetitive. And in the, other, in the other way, when you use a dialect coach as a language specialist who works with uh, actors uh, on their accent and who has also prepared herself a lot in order to prepare actors and actresses, and uh, she has also done this and that, so you don't repeat the same she, she, she many times. Okay, so there is fluency of ideas. Basically, that's the, in summarizing the topic of using passive voice and the defining and non-defining uh, clauses. Okay, now we're going to Move on to unit, unit uh, section five. 
there should be a law. Okay. That's the topic. When we say there should be a law, why do we say there should be a law? There should be a law. In which situation do we use this expression? Think about it. When do we say, ah, oh, there should be a law for this, there should be a law for that? What law do you think we are missing? Is Are there any laws missing? Do you think that there are some uh, human or so, so, yes? We need uh, extra information for for that. Uh -huh. For example, uh, in social, in the social, uh, in the society, okay, do you think that uh, there is something that is not regulated and needs to be regulated? By a law? Can you think of something that does not exist a law for? Oh, teacher, for example, yes. this just, uh, this idea just came uh, uh, to my mind. Mm -hmm. For example, um, there should be a law, let's say, that uh, include uh mature people for uh hiring in, in the companies because now nowadays i think that they companies just uh look down on people on mature people and they then rather to uh, hire the fresh young people yes so there uh, should be a lot of that actually it sounds yes uh, yeah now i remember good oscar thank you there is sometimes a kind of discrimination right because they they say sometimes okay uh we need people for this okay this and this job this and this position uh, no older than 35 right and then probably uh -huh, it should be banned okay it should be banned okay it should be banned this is another one it should be banned Sure, but yes. just just something else to, to add to add to this uh, comment. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that they uh, they create that law, but who is uh, who is the one that is going to 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 take control of this? If this is uh, being a um, how do you, how do you say that? If they been uh, following the, the rules, I mean, there's uh, there's not gonna be no one that is going to. Uh, it's going to take in, I mean, control of this. Okay. Because, I mean, at the end, people, uh, okay, they can say, okay, uh, we're, we're taking into account mature people, but then uh, they they do what they want. They uh, keep on um, hiring uh, young people, you know that? So it's like a, uh, we need someone that is uh, taking control of this in a serious okay. way. Well, I... It should be, okay, look, I'm using it should, right? It should be the Ministry of uh, of Work or Job. They, uh, that's the institution that is in charge of that. For example, suppose that a, a, I have a company, okay, and then I need a, an engineer. Okay, you are the engineer, but I said, okay, I need an engineer no older than 30, okay? And you come here and then you are 35. And then I said, okay, look, you know, your curriculum and everything. I think you have all the uh, qualities, you know, to, and you're qualified professional to be here. But, you know, I'm really interested now in a younger uh, person because uh, the company has 
some other aims or objective. Okay, so then you stand up and then you probably tell them that it is something that is not fair, but whatever. Then you have to go and complain uh, to this uh, government institution, which is the Ministry of Work or, or Jobs. And then they are the ones who have to come to the company because they have uh, supervisors, okay? And they have to go and they have to make these people uh, abide by the rules. I mean, probably, probably, and that is why, you know, to have a law is very complicated. But uh, suppose they, they maybe can, they cannot oblige, they cannot make the company hire you, but there should be a penalty, okay, a fine. They have to pay, okay, if you don't hire people, if you do that this again, we're going to pay, I don't know, 1000 or they say three minimum salaries or five minimum salaries, okay, for doing that, okay? So then they will, they, will, they will always find a way to sneak in the law and try to avoid hiring people, right? But at least if they are detected, you know, it could be. But like you said, it's going to, it's, it's difficult. That's why there is a, you put a law, then it's complicated for the lawyers, complicated for many people to to apply, to apply the laws. Okay, anybody has another opinion about this? Teacher, yes. maybe mm -hmm. the noise in the public transportation and around the public and private hospital, it is unregulated. Okay. Yes, in some cases too, right? There are probably, especially, well, those topics that you are talking about, it, they are very uh, sensitive, right? Because the transportation is a mess. And also in the, well, Julio Cesar is here. In, in hospitals or in health, in the health uh, area, Julio, are there any laws that need to be implemented? Excuse me? Yes. Are there any laws in the health area that need to be implemented in our country? Mm. For the benefit of of uh, patients and doctors. Uh there there's uh there's one uh ley de creación del sistema nacional integrado de salud wow ajá uh -huh. en en it mentions the 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 members of the of the systems eh, seguro social eh, batallón de sanidad militar eh, there's a uh, uh, there's seven uh, institutions. Institution, yeah. There's seven institutions, and and there's another one and another ones that are co uh, they collaborate with uh, the Ministry of of Health. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, there's uh, there's one. Uh, one that I knew is uh ley de, de tejidos y algo así para para hacer trasplantes de órganos for tissues I have to transplant organs ah okay yeah. mm -hmm. yes that's another one that even for that right even for that we need laws. Okay, yeah. good. So you see, yes, I mean, talking about laws is a very complex, it's a very complex topic because, you know, in every, for example, for me, I think that in all the careers for teachers, for doctors, for engineers, uh, well, for police officers also, you know, everybody should know about teaching and laws. For example, a doctor must know about laws, definitely. 
yeah. if you don't know if you don't know about loans, you can go to jail, right? And but also it's good. Uh, also, the doctors can be good teachers. You know, when they are in a, talking to a patient, okay, you have to do this because of this and this and this and that, right? A, a lawyer also needs to be a good teacher to explain the people the laws. A police mm -hmm. officer has to be a good teacher also, you know, to explain the people why uh, they should respect the law, right? A, um, an engineer also, right? Or an architect, when they are going to build a house, they have to explain the people, okay, what is a good decision or not to construct what they want. And also they have to know about the laws, right? Teachers, for me, for example, in my case, I have to be, be very careful in my classes when I work with teenagers, okay? About the low crecer juntos and everything. And also I need to know um, many, many things also about other areas, okay? So you see, I think the education is very, um, it's an in integral, right? So there is an integral when you have to, put together laws, your profession, and teaching. So I think there are three professions that have to be together all the time. Well, we don't have much time. I think, uh, well, I'm gonna show you the video tomorrow, but you already have an idea that we are going to be talking about should something that, but giving like suggestions, right? Suggestions about things that we should do. Now, just let me go quickly through um, the list and attendance. So let me see, Francisco is here, right? Yes, the chairperson. Yes, Giovanni, Giovanni, Hector Ivan. Present teacher. Here you are, Hector. Uh, Ivan Ibrahim. Ivan, I didn't see Ivan today. Joel Emanuel. Present. Yes, Joel. Jorge Alberto, sorry. Jorge Alberto. Present. Joselino is here, yes. Yes. Julio Cesar. Carla yes. Serena. Uh, Catherine Lisbeth. Present teacher. There you are. Luis Eduardo. Present teacher. Okay, Marlene Elizabeth. Present teacher. Melissa. Present. Yes, Melissa. Hey, Michelle. Michelle, Michelle. Okay, then we have Neftali. Yes. Neftali. Oscar Alexander. He said that he Present was. Present teacher. Okay, yeah, now you're here. Oscar Obdulio, Jazz, Romeo. Sara Elisa. Present. Sofia. Sofia Elizabeth. Wendy Paola. Present teacher. And Xiomara Violeta. Present. And Jenny. Teacher, you didn't mention me. Who? Carla Rene? Yes. I didn't. Carla, Carla, Carla. Yeah, yeah, after Carla, Selena, yes, Carla Rene. Yes, you're here. I already got it. Sure. Okay, people. So then uh, tomorrow we're going to start with the unit, I mean, section five, right? Remember, we're going to watch the video. If you can watch it, if you have questions, you can write down your questions. And I will send in the WhatsApp the information about the defining and non defining uh, clauses, okay? So have a very good night, and I'll night. see you tomorrow, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.